our next snow heat call here at multiple units only a few of them are labeled so we turned them all on and found out which one didn't come on and that was this one yeah that one's not running could be that one second floor west which makes no sense so it would seem like it's this one here not labeled at all it's not even trying to run state-of-the-art equipment here got some blinky blinks yep three blinks nothing there nice nothing to tell you what the hell it's trying to tell you well before we had diagnostic lights we had to actually figure stuff out on our own so kill power and let's restart this bad bird and that wasn't enough to kill it let's try and doing the thermostat here I don't do it either. Still blinking. So I'm gonna assume it's either the pressure switch, because that's the very first thing it usually opens or closes. 23 volts, it's open. Let's go to our limit switch. Here's be closed. Motor's hot. That ain't good. What do we got here? We have 6.7 amps and it's rated for 0.7, so she's not running. And it's not much of a lock rotor so let's see if she spins this is not a unit you're probably gonna get parts for today all right so we talked to the owner he's got quite a few people gonna be in here he understands it may not do real great I'm gonna do a Hail Mary on this baby and see if we can get her loose I'm gonna go with PB blaster here because it's more of a lubricant than it is a uh, degreaser like WD-40 is we're gonna spray it in there see if we can get her loose it's not real tight but we're gonna try that and see if it does any good. If it don't, not a big deal. I mean, this is a uh, 98 possibly serial number. I popped the little cap off there. Let's see if we can give it a little squirtage there. Let's see if we can try to get it into the uh, bearings in there. If we can at least get it running for him for the night until we can get the part, I'm sure he will appreciate the effort. But we're not going to spend a crap load of time on this thing either. Yeah, look, I tried taking the uh, screws out of the uh, draft motor and it didn't want to come out, so you must have to take the whole panel out. Let's try powering her back up. And when I was down there, yep, they tried to take off. There we go. Come on, baby. When I was down there, the thermostat was blank, which means that we do got the right one. It's powered by the uh, by the unit. That look at that. Oh yeah. We got the pressure switch hose off. They just let it run for a bit. Let's stop it. Now look at that. It's coasting down pretty good. It ain't coming to a quick stop. I would say we're probably gonna get by. If not, like I said, we ain't out nothing. Let's try it again. Sounds like she's got about three-speed transmission there. Usually it always seems to be that freaking front bearing. Probably because it's closer to the heat. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and hook this back up. We're gonna go ahead and chop that little piece off. You gotta watch for that. A lot of times that will get hot and then rot. But I mean, this unit is only like, I don't know what, 25 years old, 20 something years old. Look at that. The old Wilder Beast is kicking it up. 
Only thing bad about the bag out here in this weather is the open top lets all the snow in and stuff. Well, I've got the new XL something or another that Dave just reviewed coming. So it ain't here yet. Tool nuts taking forever to get it shipped out. I ain't sure what their excuse is, but they're dragging their hind in. Not bad. High tech redneck, baby. This has got the flame sensor and the spark igniter combined together under one igniter. Actually, the flame sensor and igniter are on two different uh, prongs. They're hooked together, but I'm not a humongo fan of that. Okay, it's cooled down. Look how long she's coasting down to speed there. That should have broke it loose good enough to get it by. This is definitely not a permanent fix whatsoever. All right, let's start over. See, you can diagnose it without the number four blinky blinks. Just gotta go back to old fashioned elimination. First thing that usually happens is your draft motor. There she goes. Check the filters on this beast. I'm pretty sure it is a direct drive blower, but We'll check to see if it has a belt or not. Take a second here to show you one of my modifications. I've got the Malco driver. One of the only things I don't like about it is, is the quarter inch doesn't get into tight spots because it has such a fat head on it. The 5 16 is fine, but the quarter isn't. So what I did is I put it on a uh, grinding wheel and then put my drill like that and then just grinded that bad boy down to about the same thickness there on the edge corners as what the 5 16 was. And uh, it's worked great now for almost a year with no strip outs or anything like that. So if you've had issues with it, there's a little tech tip for you. At least has inspection ports, so we can check the heat exchanger and see how she looks. As old as this is, it's surprising that it's still going so strong. But. Uh, a little bit dirty, but not bad enough that they can't wait until we come back. This one's not real exciting, but that's a lot of times the reason why I don't show a lot of these type of videos, because there ain't a whole lot to it. Heat exchanger's fine, filters are going to get by until we come back, and uh, that should wrap this one up for now. Like I said, don't recommend doing that uh, long term. If it does quit again, the pressure switch is going to shut it down. You're not going to believe this, but that one over there wasn't bad enough. This one here is down too. The uh, motor's warm and it's not spinning. Same freaking thing wrong with this one as what was wrong with the other one. So we're gonna need to order two of them. So this one here spins a little more freely. This one's kind of in standby here. Off temperature 60 seconds. Never have understood why everybody's so afraid about let them cool themselves down. Free cooling, free heat. Go ahead and pull them off it there. Not trying very hard. We have 211 volts, so kill power, hook her back up. Checked out this heat exchanger too. It's uh, fine. She wasn't ready to give up yet. She got a little bit of a rattle to her. I think I can smell some fuel. Oh yeah. She's not wanting to start. Get no ignition. We'll see whether or not it arcs the ground. I think we got a back control board too. Very, very weak. Yeah, and I'm using my amp meter to know whether or not it should be doing it. Yeah, very weak. All right. I wasn't going to let it run anyway, just because that motor does not sound like uh, it's going to make it, and it's too much liability. So we're going to go ahead and. Uh, We'll shut the gas section down. We'll leave it so the fan can run so they can at least circulate the heat around. Um, but uh, all I did was used a short jumper. Now you gotta be careful. That's possibly five, ten thousand volts somewhere in that area. You don't want to get your crap shocked. So using the insulated pliers and everything else is a it helps, but it could still shock the crap out of you. So don't be doing that. We're just gonna leave the W terminal off. That way it can't even run at all. And uh, we'll leave the gas valve off. Probably have them order a new igniter too. Well, that one officially wraps it up. This is just why you gotta be aware of everything that's going on. And uh, wow, that thing's honking down.
look at everything going on around you because otherwise it really sucked to come up here and get that one going and then find out that uh, this one's down and you got to get this one too so we just try to get everything at one time if you guys like the video please like share and subscribe check out the description section down below for any links to the tools and, and other miscellaneous information that you might want to know and until next time we'll catch you on the next one yeah.